jump into our episode yeah welcome to episode 87 of the bar is ankle high your weekly adhd podcast that explores life's slow bars with wit and wisdom i'm katie i'm garrett and i don't think we have any housekeeping this week um i did just right before we started recording upload another bonus episode to patreon so if you want Bonus episodes, ad-free episodes, um, extended episodes, oh, yeah. and video episodes. You can join our Patreon. That's right. We had that extra Patreon that we did mm-hmm. recently. Um, oh, you can nice. join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high. Uh, it's five bucks a month, and you get all of those things, and you get added to our close friends list on Instagram, which I do try to post to, but sometimes I forget because um, I have ADHD, but it is what it is. Um yeah and I was telling I mean I feel like considering it's an ADHD pod we've had we've really worked with our ADHD very well and have had very few mishaps I think so um yeah I have been posting and I mentioned it in our extended episode um so Patreon has heard this but I've been posting a lot to our TikTok account so the past like week and a half or so I've been posting like spring cleaning with ADHD and like filming myself cleaning different like like just my desk or I cleaned off that bookcase finally um and it looks so much better now and I got well I got a bunch of stuff from that bookcase taken off that bookcase and they're in bags ready to go to the Salvation Army or whatever but um they're still in my house technically uh but we're getting there that's the worst feeling (laughs) Don't worry, they're going to sit in my car for uh, eight months until I then have to clean my car out and then I'm going to be in a rage. I actually hired the like 1-800-GOT-JUNK people to come and clean out because we have like all this old rotted wood and some old pieces of wooden fence next to the shed in our backyard. And we just need Mm -hmm. it taken away because Coco gets back there. There's like bunny nests back there and we don't both PK and I are allergic to bees. So we don't want bees to end up making a nest in like the folds of the wood and whatever. So they're coming on Monday, actually. So I might just have them take all this crap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because like, I feel like it's weird. All of these bags of like books are behind. Our yeah. Shed. Like it's, know. it's just the kind of thing where I'm like, they're also taking the haunted piano out of our basement and this fridge from like the 1950s that there's like an alcove in our, um, kitchen that's like perfectly carved to the size of this fridge that's in our basement and the former owner just put it in his basement (laughs) so it's just living down there so we rent this house from my brother so I texted him and I was like hey do you want me to see if they'll get rid of the haunted piano and the um fridge in your basement when they come on Monday and he was like yeah sure so I was like well I'll let you know what it costs I think it'll be like 200 bucks for that stuff and then another 200 for the shit in the backyard but They might be. I think you can also call our uh, um, like utility place too, and I think they'll they give you like a I think there's like a rebate thing that they do for where they like pick up old fridges. Yeah, I think it's fridges specifically. Oh, probably because of like they probably have like a catalytic converter or or something weird in there. There's something in there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. This one's old as shit. So it's I'm assuming the same age as the oven that's built in that has the like Jetsons door to it. So um <laughs> I remember when we bought our our old house and the tub was like this. The tub and toilet were both as like green mm-hmm. color like this. I think they were called like avocado. Yeah. And the toilet was a whisper flush. So you would push a button and it would do this like super slow oh yeah so then you think that like you've destroyed the toilet every time yeah i hate when i go to someone's house and it does that yeah (laughs) so it was awful and that was like when we when we moved in i was like this needs to be replaced like immediately we need a new toilet i can't deal with this yeah if i have anxiety about how much toilet paper i've used when i pee i can't I can't have that happen when I do something else other than pee. I can't. I can't live with that. Also, there's not enough Lexapro in the world. And like mentally, 
I'm not saying this is logical. Okay. And I know this is coming from like the little kid part of my brain, but I just feel like when I use an old weird looking toilet like that, like something's going to bite my butt. That's my brain. It's like, oh my God, you can't use that toilet. Something's going to bite <laughs> the you. Satan I alligator that lives in the drains is yes. going to bite your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sign up for Patreon. You, you need to hear our rant, our our meandering, and how we arrived at a non-binary Satan alligator. Yeah. Who's amphibious. Uh, they, like, you know, just yes. keeps their options open. Who swims around in high water. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like my alligator? Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Um... <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, old toilets. I don't know how. Oh, so the junk people. Yeah, so the junk people are coming. So they might go That's with nice. some discarded board board games and um, books that I just I'm never gonna get to. They're just taking up space. Hey, I got a couple pets that I might want to throw in on that <laughs> junk pile. <laughs> um, but if. So we're recording this on Saturday, April 6th. Friday, April 5th, there was the earthquake heard around the world, the 4.8 magnitude earthquake from New Jersey, Um, like central New Jersey near Philadelphia. Um, Philadelphia is in Pennsylvania. Just before somebody messages us and says Philly is not (laughs) in New Jersey. I know it's not in New Jersey. It'll be the same person. (laughs) That will get mad that I was calling um, traveling to Canada domestic travels. So. That was me. Um, um, yeah, be the same. The same group of people who are mad about that will be the same ones who are like, actually, Katie, Philadelphia. <laughs> actually, <laughs> that's not where that is. As a matter of fact, um, yeah. So anyway, so what? Um, what so anyway <laughs> sorry <laughs> so w- w- have you ever had a dream that you and you so you and you you wanted to do you so much you could do anything <laughs> that's what that was so what uh, anyway <laughs> That was great. That was great to watch in real time. (laughs) Loved it. (sighs) It's amazing what I'm capable of. Anyway. It is. (laughs) Um, So I asked, if you follow us on Instagram, I asked our our Instagram followers last night for topic ideas because I was at a loss. Um, Tune into Patreon if you want to know why I was, I personally was at a loss this week. I just could not come up with anything. We were both at a loss, yeah. Um, Yeah. So actually, my nail tech, Corey, replied and said, what should an adhd do to prepare for an earthquake? And she had posted some, like, funny stories. To her. Our bear attack is all I can think of. How to survive a bear? Well, so, <laughs> which I remember none of. So we, it was, like, around this time last year, I think, maybe, or, like, oh. yeah, it had to be around this time. But they had said, like, oh, like a big... um like windstorm is coming or something. And she lives, um, her and her husband live in a house that they built. Excuse me. Um, Seltzer was probably not a great choice in the middle of recording. Speaking from experience. (laughs) Um, But they live in a house that they built. And so they have a private well. And so she had told me at some point last year that her husband was making fun of her because she filled up their tub with water and then had this like huge, like five gallon, like Gatorade thing of water for drinking water. And I was, and then like, they never lost power. And I was like, yeah, why did you fill your tub with water? And it was Mm -hmm. like in order to flush the toilet and all these different things, because Mm -hmm. they're on a well, if they lose power, then they can't pump up. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. it just didn't occur to me. that That's how that works. Um, it makes mm-hmm. sense. I just, mm. um, yeah, if you it's, never had a well. it's underground and therefore doesn't exist. Uh, so, 
Uh, out of sight, out of mind. I would love to hear <laughs> Katie's take on how like utilities and sewer systems work. Uh, they don't. Oh, it's underground. No, that doesn't. That doesn't. That's not witchcraft thing. is how they work. And uh, I'm not available for any other questions or um, to accept explanation. Uh, no, and the it- poop floats away in the whisper flush, and it's <laughs> it's gone. Um, so, which, uh, but anyway, I'm sure she replied to this like and said that as a joke. But I think it might be a good thing to talk about for a couple things. Like one, how to prepare for a natural disaster or a crisis in case folks listening have never had to make like an emergency preparedness kit and like don't know what that Mm -hmm. includes if you're not like a doomsday prepper. Um, Mm -hmm. And two, why ADHDers are so good at handling emergencies. So, yeah. So when I said cursed, yeah, yeah. I, now I see what you Yeah, mean. Garrett yeah. thought we were talking about curses today. That was her guess. Um, so yeah. I'm starting with that second question first, why we're so good at handling emergencies. Um, in one of our first episodes, we mentioned bug out bags. And for the life of me, I cannot That's remember. I thought yeah, of. I can't remember what the topic was. Do you? Um, I don't remember the topic, but I know that it was, it had something to do with like, um, there was like, yeah, they were saying. Cash. coupon cutting keep cash on yeah. hand it was literally like and like have a bug out episode. bag <laughs> yeah in case of a natural disaster or like carry cash right and so i was like Whoa. like i don't i i like i said it for the life of me and i was like well i'm not gonna look it up because it's more fun to not know um but anyway it was a weird time make that a, a poll on instagram if people can tell us the correct <laughs> win a sticker (laughs) do our homework for us us. (laughs) um it was just a weird time we were just learning how to research for this podcast but in any way um clearly still working on it back also when you were ruining my life teaching us about the adhd sleep cycle um you Mm. talked about theta brain waves and Mm -hmm. research shows that as a quick refresher, um, people with ADHD have more theta brain waves than neurotypical people. Theta brain waves are the brain waves produced by your brain as it starts to go into sleep mode. Hence the, what's it? Interruptive sleep. What was it? Intrusive, Intrusive sleep. Um, that, you know, ruined my life and rocked my world in that episode. Um, when I realized that yeah. I do that and, um, but in that episode, you talked about how intrusive sleep is different than like narcolepsy because the brain waves are different and it's these theta brain yes. waves that they measure. Yeah. Um, so, but in a crisis, when your amygdala is activated, that, that part of your brain that triggers your fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response, um, when that happens, our brains get kicked from rather than going into an extreme adrenaline response, which is what happens to an overload that happens to neurotypical people, we just get kicked into like neurotypical baseline mode. So our theta brain waves are knocked down and we have normal brain waves, which is why it seems like we're cool, calm and collected and able to have like a plan and come up with a plan of action that's coherent and we can communicate. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. It makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the primary reasons that we're really good in crises. Um, and And that's the same thing my therapist was saying with the, like when drinking mm -hmm. like alcohol, um, smoking pot, like it slows your brain waves down. So you have more of like a neurotypical cycle of brain waves. So it, it is, it's like, this is one of those, like when you look at the, the brain science, like the explain to me, like I'm five brain Mm -hmm. science of this, you're like, Oh Yeah that's why my brain works different. <laughs> right. And I, I think that's yeah. like one of the things that I really love about this podcast, but like researching these things is, is that there is an explanation for the most part. There's mm-hmm. very rare, very rarely do we come up against like, mm, it's just what happens. Like there seems to be yeah. at least a, like, if we don't know, like the cause of ADHD and like why some people are born with it and why others aren't, we at least know, like, it, it just makes sense that if you are normally at this, like, almost sleep mode brain activity, then when a crisis happens, you still have that amygdala response. You still have that, like, lizard brain fight or flight response. But because you're already at this, like, weird level, it just kicks you up into the normal level, whereas everyone else is up here freaking out, panicking, and not able to make, like, 
thoughtful, clear decisions, we are able to. But the other thing that really helps with that is that ADHDers are really creative and innovative, um, which we've definitely mentioned before that a lot of ADHDers um, are much better at thinking outside the box. We can find Mm -hmm. a different way to finish a project that would be faster or more efficient or just even more fun than like the regular way to do something. And Mm -hmm. it still gets the job done. It's not like slap shod work necessarily. Um, No, I feel like my ad hoc problem solving is like very quick. mm -hmm. Yes. Same. Like, yeah, I think like I, I, (laughs) I'm like thinking of like those times that I've like built things like a bookshelf that comes in a bunch of pieces. Like I'll like Mm -hmm. generally like skim the instructions, but for the most part I can figure it out and it always works. And like the bookshelf of lore in (laughs) that Patreon has seen, I've put that together. It's the same. It's with my episode that I'm never going to finish. Okay. (laughs) I will. Those two things. I put that, that bookshelf together in like 2009 and it's still here. Like it's, you know, and it's been through a ton of moves. I mean, granted it's heavy as fuck. But it's been through a ton of moves yeah. and has not had any issues. Um, but it's the kind of thing where, like, I can figure it out. And, like, more or less, it'll be cool and fine. But um, mm-hmm. that that innovation and that creativity is really helpful in a crisis because we can see a lot of problems that, like, if you're thinking of, like, problems people encounter in movies, right? The planned way out of the burning building is blocked. And so now what, Right. ADHDers, like you said, those ad hoc problem solving skills were better at quickly adapting to that adversity and finding a different solution, even if it's like destructive, like in Titanic, when they bust through that one door and the guy's like, you're going to have to pay for that, you know, like, <laughs> like we're, we're just going to get the job done. Like it's, it's the kind of thing, yeah. like in an emergency, like it's mm-hmm. going to be quick and dirty, but it'll be done. Like if you need, mm-hmm. you know, a wound to be like tourniqueted or whatever, Um, I feel like there's a better word for that in any event. I encounter it a lot with like baby stuff. Mm -hmm. Like when something and I'm like, oh, shit, like what am I like? I quickly need to what am I going to do that's going to like immediately meet all of the needs that I need met right now? Because there's like a hundred things that just went wrong. Yeah. Um, And it really I mean, it's like it's it can be a real lifesaver when. (laughs) Yeah. I know that yeah, I do it on. a lot, apparently, with cooking, and PK is very jealous of my ability to just like look in a cabinet and like mm-hmm. whip something up. Um, that's the only that's my strength is I can be like, oh, okay, I have these four random things. Mm-hmm. Um, I can make this. Yeah, I'm not good. I get overwhelmed in a grocery store. I do better when I have like five random items. Yeah, he would rather have like a a recipe to follow than to like throw something together. Um. Yeah, same. Different. I'm flavors. good with like a HelloFresh recipe. It depends. Like, I I have a limitation to the number of steps I can follow, basically. <laughs> and even on HelloFresh, I tend to we skip know. around. <laughs> oh, you have to, because otherwise they'll have you doing one thing that takes you know 30 minutes, and you're not starting until you're halfway through the we- recipe, and it's oh yeah, that's a nightmare. Well, because they mention it as like anyway. one line, like preheat the oven. I'm like, no, I need to do that before I chop these vegetables. <laughs> like, yeah. Why am I? Yeah. Um, In any event. uh, So the other thing that goes with the creative creativity and innovation is our intuition. So ADHD has sometimes been described as like a filtering disorder where we have difficulty filtering out unnecessary information, which we've talked about, like can lead to our trouble, our trouble with prioritizing tasks and thus time management perceived issues and whatever i used to have that with um like academic reading Mm -hmm. when i was a kid yeah a very hard time like if i had to highlight a passage oh same i'd have it would just be a block of yellow law school was like i I couldn't (laughs) yeah i had a really hard time like if you if i talked about it i could be like oh yeah like this is the point Mm -hmm. but if i'm just like silently reading it on my own in a especially in like a limited amount of time (gasps) yeah what did they what was that English exam that we had to take in like seventh grade um it was like a state exam I mean, I like, but yeah. uh yeah it was like reading comprehension like you had to read like a huge mm-hmm. thing and then answer a few questions on it and I like notorious it just took me so long I could not keep focused go figure 
Um, anyway, so we have this difficulty filtering out un unnecessary information, but as a result, we tend to notice things that other people might overlook, which in an emergency is helpful. So we might have noticed that, oh, there was a different exit a few feet back. Like, let's try that way instead when this one's blocked or, um, mm -hmm. you know, this is why also like a lot of ADHDers are good at guessing the end of a movie because we've looked at the different things that were maybe in the background or something where, yeah, it was there to like hint you, but you're not supposed to quote unquote, put it together until further down the line. Mm -hmm. Same type of thing. Um, yeah. I'm either going to see those or be completely oblivious to anything and miss everything. Yes. <clears throat> it's one extreme or the other. Um, it's like that. One of our, um, listeners sent us that reel with the toilet paper roll thing. And you said you would throw the toilet paper roll. It was like something to like, remember yes. that you have to take something out of the house with you. So you like put it by the door and then you uh. inevitably walk by it and leave it at home and you forget the present for the kid's birthday party that you're going to or something. And Garrett's the solution is to like put something that's like super out of place in there. So like put a roll of toilet paper on top of your keys. So you have to move the toilet paper to get to the keys. And that way, because there's confusion, you've walked past it enough times, you don't see the toilet paper. But then when you get your keys, you're like, wait a minute, what is this? Oh, right. I have to remember the gift and da 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 And Garrett's response like was, thing, yeah. I would have yeeted that roll of toilet paper across the house, still been late, forgotten the gift, and then just been mad that there's toilet paper all over my house. And then I, I would have gotten home at the end of the day, like having to use the bathroom yes. emergently, <laughs> forgotten about the party. And then been like, where's my fucking toilet paper? <laughs> I watched that video. I was like, oh, that would not work for me. Nope. No, no. Yeah. So literally grab my keys and throw the toilet paper. <laughs> it's still like, I'm still laughing about it when I think about it. I'm like, oh, wow. That would so not work, work for me at all. <laughs> Definitely not. Um. Yeah. Same. I have too many things like just scattered around my house anyway that like there's not really anything that's like out of place. <laughs> Not, nothing's in place to be identified as oh that's out of place um I just I do tend to just like I do things the night before I lay things out the night before group things together and like that that works for me I don't have like the my flavor is not I have to put something out of place to if I have everything together I'm usually okay I'm usually okay as long as I like even if he doesn't remember if I say to PK we have to remember to bring blah 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 you're more then likely to. I'll remember it because it's like if I write it down if I write it down I'll remember it even if I never look at the list again mm -hmm. kind of thing um it's yeah. just you know again whatever but with that that filtering thing with picking up on other things and then the other side of that is um it can happen when you're in a crisis reaction, but like hyper-focusing. So like even neurotypical people, I think have this like hyper-focus thing. That's what adrenaline does to you. Um, but our hyper-focus in particular, because we do it so often, I think we're better at um, being a quick study on things. So in the context of a crisis, we can say, okay, blah, blah, blah. I need to build this bookshelf. Not that building a bookshelf would be a crisis thing, but like, I need to put this thing together in order to get to where point A yeah. to point B, I'll just do it really yeah. quick. I'll skim the instructions. I'll filter whatever, because I skim everything. Cause I don't have time. Um, but like we're used to that. So we're able to function more effectively at that level, um, than neurotypical people who don't spend their lives <laughs> filtering things out and having to be a quick study Weird. and hyper-focusing on things. Um, and also I think hyper-focusing makes it seem like a superpower when you're surrounded by panicking neurotypical people in a crisis because we look level-headed and we look like okay all we need to do is figure out how to turn on the cb radio and get the signal out so i'm gonna do x part you go hook it up and find an outlet that works and use this tester thing to test the outlets and like we can divide up those tasks and again like see those things through so that like okay you need a task. You mm -hmm. need something to do so that you're not panicking. So like, let's find something for you to do. That's not busy work. It's not bullshit, but, um, is also like keeping you busy, Mr. Or Miss neurotypical. Um, but 
put that bookshelf together right now. <laughs> it is urgent. <laughs> Go put going to put our books. Um, so anyway. Do it right now. The junk guys can't pick up my books. Go put it together. <laughs> if there's a crisis, we're good people to have around is the point. Um, but. That's, that's that makes perfect sense it's like the, when we read that thing and they were talking about like good careers and they were mentioning like working in an er mm -hmm. or something which i'm like oh i'm not not no thank you um yeah. but i can totally see why that because like boredom is yeah your toast totally it's intrusive sleep when you're bored so something stimulating is yeah absolutely the way to go my mom i loved working in labor and delivery i think probably for that reason because mm -hmm. it's like up and down and then um sometimes it's crazy sometimes mm -hmm. it's like silent right and same yeah. same in the or like sometimes it's the same cases over and over and then sometimes it's an emergency whatever um mm -hmm. sorry i have a hangnail that's distracting me um so where were you when the earthquake happened um i was sitting on my couch my spouse and i were talking to each other <laughs> and I thought that they were working on this big, there was a big like public works project literally five feet from my front door. Um, and I thought they were restarting it. And I was like, Jesus Christ, the whole house is shaking. And then I was like, oh, it's an earthquake. And he goes, it's not an earthquake. We don't get earthquakes. And I said, turn around and look. And we have um, on the sides of our cabinets, we have like mug, like a mug tree mm -hmm. basically. And they hang from the handles. Yeah. So the mugs were all like, oh, wow. <laughs> They were all swinging. So I was like, turn around and look at the mugs. And he was like, <gasps> and then we both just stood it. And we were like, <gasps> <laughs> it was just like very, it was very comical. He was like, it can't possibly be an earthquake. It's like a cartoon. I was like, it, ha it has to be an earthquake. Like the house is still moving. But it was like, it was, I have to say, having never felt one before, all I could think was how fucking scary it would be for like a really intense one. Because it's like. The sensation of the couch you're sitting on moving mm -hmm. is insane. So I just can't imagine. Like, people that live in places that get a lot of earthquakes, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, I was at work, you doing? which was crazy that my huge brick building, and I, I mean, it wasn't, like, huge, huge, but it's bigger than a house. Um, yeah. And it's a, like, two- or three-story building. Um and relatively new i mean i or it's just been remodeled i don't know but um it like the whole building was shaking and i was actually on a teams call with a coworker, and um he's down in queens and we were talking oh so he yeah so all of a sudden he he like looked around and was like the whole house is shaking i think it's an earthquake and i was like what <laughs> kind of like your spouse <laughs> i was like are you sure and he's like, well, the whole, the whole house is shaking because he was working from home. Yeah. And, um, I was like, did it was the duration of, the and that was the that thing I was where like, I was like, like initially, yeah. cause in my head, I'm like, well, cause I knew, I mean, I could see he was working from home. He wasn't in the office. And so I was like, did maybe just like a huge truck go by? Because like, that's what would have caused, like, if I was at, if I was here, if I was at home when that happened, that would have been my mm -hmm. first thought because we do have some big yeah. trucks that go by. They don't go by fast, but the, we do have some big trucks go by and it would be the kind of thing where I'm like, all right. And, um, so he was like, That's why I thought it was the construction. Yeah. I was like, Oh, and so yeah. he was like, he was like, no. And he's like looking out his window and everything. And I was like, Oh, that's wild. I was like, I wonder if I'll feel it then if, if, you know, you're feeling it in Queens and sure. Like 10 seconds later, um he watched my camera like start shaking and everything and like the whole building was shaking it was pretty nuts yeah which again it, it really like, was that was a 4.8 it was just the kind of thing where i was like huh and like it went on for long enough where i was like should i be getting under my desk like yeah it was a split second we were like that's what i'm saying I, that was my thought was oh shit if this was stronger i can't i can't imagine like people that that live you know oh near. for sure all i could think was Iconic like please that a lot. god don't let one of our fucking radiator pipes have like come loose and then i come home to that scene from community where everything's on fire and somebody's bleeding and it's just my cats and our dog and like somebody's got like 
a spray bottle trying to like put out the fire and one person's carrying Sophie pizzas. would be sitting up on top of the cat tree like picking at her teeth like <laughs> there'd be a coal shaped like hole in our windows hole through all the walls <laughs> yeah like he just ran through four walls <laughs> yeah 100 percent. so thankfully he came home and they were all fine um actually come to think of it that might be why the cat's food dish is like tilted more than it is but they're also very pushy eaters so i guess i just put it towards that but it's very plausible pushy. that it was from <laughs> the earthquake it, it was a really crazy thing and we we turned on um i turned on because i'm an npr nerd um and we usually listen to wnyc so mm. i put on wnyc and um if anybody's listening to wnyc there's the, the brian lair show it's like a call-in mm. show and they were like okay well we were supposed to be talking about this but i guess we're gonna talk about the earthquake <laughs> and all the people are calling in like and i was on the ninth oh it's got real blurry um i was on the ninth floor and i had to run outside it was just don't like, run outside i at least know just... that much <laughs> yeah my spouse was he was reading about it and he was saying how people go outside but then they stand right outside their building and just get like hit with like falling things yeah. and broken glass the and... thing is like okay so like quick breakdown of earthquake safety door frames under stairs mm -hmm. or in a stairwell are the safest places mm -hmm. to be um i knew the door or for underneath sure, yeah. like my desk at work is like steel framed wooden something or other desk like i feel safe underneath that yeah. um but like something to protect your head this is the point of of being in those places to protect your head um because if the building does fall down like and you see this a lot in any building that has collapsed the stairwells generally are still standing after a building collapse mm -hmm. um well all that extra framing correct that goes around stairs when they're building it yeah yeah and so they that's that's where you should be going um and if you can't get to a stairwell then like under a desk or something to protect your body from the falling debris that will be on top of you so that you at least have a pocket of air and whatever and all that um but yeah it was de definitely don't go outside because if the building falls down it's not going to fall straight down <laughs> like it's not like a control right, or explosion if you're going outside you have to be going like <laughs> truly away from structure right so that like but also according to all the disaster and... movies when you there's a big earthquake just the earth opens up and you fall into a giant chasm so you know that's i really had not considered the fact that you you could end up with the alligator satan if there's an earthquake because the the earth will literally open and it's just and all of hell's high waters right are going to come up and then yes. amphibious non-binary alligator satan is going to swim right up to you and go chomp chomp yeah <laughs> that is the prophecy so we need to make sure that the prophecy <laughs> that we're we're careful it could happen the curse the curse was put out there there was a prophecy about it um so as a final thing i just wanted to go over quickly like what you could have in your emergency preparedness kit. Um, generally speaking, like quick things, I always have um, candles and something to put a candle in or on that's fire safe, along with matches and a lighter, because mm. inevitably one of those isn't going to work. <laughs> yep. Um, but having like a lot of times with um, like they see it a lot in places that get snowstorms or ice storms where they lose power, you'll have a candle, but then you don't have something that's fire safe to put that candle on or around. And so then people end up with these really bad house fires in those situations. So just make sure that you have like an actual candlestick or a candelabra or um, we always got those like giant three wick candles from party light which is an mlm mm -hmm. but like my mom swore by them and they burned for like a billion million hours they were, they were good and they were candles, yeah, yeah they I actually have some christmas decorations and they, from them still. they gave off yeah and they gave off a, a lot of light so like when we did lose power when mm -hmm. i was a kid that was something that we'd have in the living room because it would pretty much light up the living room i mean it was it was a big candle um but have that in a holder that is 
designed for it and is candle and fire safe so that it doesn't like explode or crack. Um, but, um, they also like, there's emergency candles, there's different types of candles. Yeah. That are like slower burning that have like the, the cloth wick. Yeah. Instead of whatever the synthetic ones that they use, the nylon, I don't know what they're made out of, but, um, the, the old like cloth ones, like that old style one burns a lot slower. Yes. And if you are burning candles for a really long time, just make sure that you crack a window, um, at least because you can build up carbon monoxide, um, that way. So just be careful. Um, also flashlights with batteries, um, in a perfect world, you don't have the batteries just chilling out in your flashlights for years on end. Cause the batteries can leak and then your flashlight won't work. Um, yeah, I can tell you, um, we lost power recently with a bad storm and, um, for about 24 hours and all of our old headlamps that we had, which I would also add to your list, mm. have flashlights, but also have headlamps so that you, you can be hands-free. Yeah. Um, all of them were, we had one that was still working because the battery acid had just like leaked and yes. like, just, and they were like, I mean, they were just like cheap old ones. Yeah. So we just ordered a whole bunch of like fresh headlamps so that we have (laughs) work and there's like you can keep the batteries like in the pack that they come in and they won't leak right they just sent us like um when we when we ordered new ones they were like disassembled so they came with like batteries and then the headlamp was separate so i mean you could always just like leave them in that box right it takes two seconds i guess like that's together, my question but... is like if i just leave the batteries out will they still leak i don't know i hate batteries yeah so if you can find a solar powered one or and one that can like recharge with solar power fine i'm not saying like go out or have some backup yeah like just yeah. have your options open and just like i said yeah. in an i in a perfect world don't leave the batteries just sitting in them because they will corrode and leak and then you can't use them at all and the whole like the the it's not a matter of like wiping off the acid it just doesn't work anymore oh, yeah, it's no. dead yeah. um, also i have in here a phone power bank um find one that you can keep mm-hmm. in there also they make phone power banks that are solar chargeable um so i think that's important for this type of kit in particular um some cash just in case like if you need to get somewhere um having a little bit of cash even just to buy groceries if the power's out and you need milk or the the internet's out like they have power but like they can't process like a credit card payment or something um and i also have and this is like a little bit more long term, but like a towel. So I had like a bath towel and a dishcloth size towel, like one for each family member, a change of clothes for each season, um, comfy shoes and socks for each family member. And I had hot hands, like those hand warmer thingies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for your pocket. Yeah. yeah. And feminine hygiene products, if you need those. Um, a couple gallons of water. You do have to check those periodically. So yeah, you can't keep them infinitely. Yeah. So, um, just check that. (laughs) You know what we used to have too was a, um, again, NPR is always doing like they do quarterly fun drives and I had donated and got like a little hand crank radio oh yeah so that you can just like quick wind it up and then you've got like fm radio mm-hmm. or am radio is is also handy if like you need you don't an emergency alert and, yeah yeah you need you need to like know what's going on um i also wrote down um just some toilet paper put away and paper towels um and hand sanitizer um mm. just like for me again like if it's the apocalypse it's not going to matter as much but like it's that you just want to feel clean and like the last yeah. thing you need if you're out of power for a few days is a uti <laughs> like yeah so um i also wrote down dog and cat food so if you have pets just keep mm. some dry food or canned wet food um just like stored away so that you can get your pets food um if you need to and finally i had um cans of food and dry foods like rice and beans canned sweet potatoes and i also put salt and pepper because if it is the end of the world do you really want your last meal to be bland (laughs) there we go salt and pepper (laughs) 
in your bug out bag just in case <laughs> that's um yeah i i honestly uh a couple packets of liquid iv are probably also a good yeah actually if you can't also a good if call. you're not like in a place where storing gallons of water is like feasible having one of those life straws is probably just as good um because oh, yeah, yeah. then you filter. can yeah filter the water at least yeah. and um you'll be able to drink water if you can't cook with it or get enough to cook with it um mm -hmm. but yeah so those are some things i mean for me it's always just like candles and flashlights that i keep on hand for like actual mm -hmm. power outages and then um i mean generally speaking i don't expect like a actual apocalypse to happen and if it does hopefully i'm not wearing an underwire when it happens i don't know like uh, if there is an apocalypse, I want to go on the first wave. Yeah. Oh, apparently, Just like regarding the earthquake, right there's been like some rumblings before this that the solar eclipse on Monday is somehow rapture related. So there are people who think that the earthquake was perhaps a sign that the rapture is coming. And oh, I hope so. <laughs> We're definitely going to get just left behind, but we're going to have so much of a better time once certain people are just fry us. We <laughs> Shit's bad here. It's it's just getting worse. Just fry us. It's okay. Look, non-binary Satan is going to come back and he's going to fight with Jesus or something. I don't know. I didn't read that part of the Bible. Can you imagine if you went back and you're like, "Oh shit, it's really <laughs> It's non-binary alligator Jesus Satan. Jesus is boxing an alligator. <laughs> boxing an alligator. <laughs> if we had Episode animated title. episodes that like <laughs> oh. Yeah, like Elise Myers is always doing like the like the emojis yes. and stuff, like the stickers. <laughs> yeah, that would be God. Jesus. We would be too powerful. That's true. We would be too powerful. Yeah. We used to work with somebody who would say to me, um, you know, she was like, she was just like a smart, funny, like very savvy, streetwise person. Okay. And she would go, you know, God made me, God made me this and this and this. He couldn't give me a body. I I would be doing foul shit <laughs> is what she said. If I had a good body, I'd be doing foul shit and I'd be getting into too much trouble. So God knew he could only give me this and the, which you know, is saying something and... coming from that person because yes she had she, stories she was doing foul <laughs> shit yeah you think i say she's some done... shit <laughs> i you yeah she's she's a real gem and she would come out with stuff and I, the same face i do to katie <laughs> did you guys hear that that was wild <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's it. It's like, we would, we would be, we would be too powerful if we could also immediately animate. Absolutely. Things that we're describing, yeah. So. If I had like actual artistic talent. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. The world needs us to be limited. Limited. Yeah. And in, in certain things because. Yeah. That would trigger the rap. We're already too powerful. Um, yeah. And we're just barely reined in by our partners. Uh, yeah. And sometimes they're not, they're not effective. So. Yeah. They do their best, but I can get out of my leash every now and then. So. <laughs> you know, if I could get my shit together and actually do that episode, I could have a reference to that topic, but <laughs> I can't. And I, oh, why do I keep going blurry? I can't. And I won't. Um, so sorry. Sorry. I wish I had some, some good input, but. That's okay. Nothing aside from, yeah, it's better if I. I can't, just realized I can't that we're basically things. wearing the same shirt in different colors. I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Is yours from Athleta? No, oh. mine is uh, American Eagle. Oh, I like it. Yeah, it's very comfy, but it's a little lightweight, and I'm very chilly right now. But I won't put the blanket over myself because it's holding up my laptop. And there was a mess of cords. On. If, if people could see, I might take a picture. You should take a picture. I'll um, post it to, to our stories. Yeah. Um, of my setup right now is, cur you want to talk about cursed? My setup right now is cursed. <laughs> um, but. Completely cursed. You problem solved and you got it done. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It was one of those like it was chaotic. I was completely unworried. I was like, oh no, the, this is. We'll I was a little out. bit worried, but I do wish that I had been recording that whole time that you were setting that up because if only for the unpaid it intern's so benefit, because I think he would have really appreciated watching the mayhem. It was so much, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get myself set up. Garrett did say that it was like when you FaceTime a boomer and they move the camera like so that you're just looking at they their They answer chin the phone. And, like... <laughs> and it's just like this. <laughs> yeah. Can you see me? Can... What about? <laughs> that was me getting set up. And then me going, can you hear me? And Katie's like, no. <laughs> oh, hold on. What about now? No. <laughs> Which, to be clear, there was no response when she asked those questions because I couldn't hear her. So <laughs> she was looking at me going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she wasn't worried. I was a little bit worried. It looked like we wouldn't be able to record. <laughs> It was actually the reverse of what normally happens. Normally, I'm the person that's like, mm, Katie's like, I'll figure it out. And she's yeeting herself into something. Um, it was a nice role reversal. Yeah, it was. Where I was like, oh, no, this will be fine. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Just, it was it was nuts. Blankets, pillows, hitting the microphone, camera going blurry. It was really impressive. It was some of my best work. <laughs> But it will go into the into history because we didn't record. And then I thought we were recording. And then I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I should have just pressed record. You probably should have. I wouldn't have noticed because I was so I was Jiminy clicking it. And, you know, that was really was what obvious. was making me nervous because you were like, it's fine. I'll just like hold all of these things in place. And I was like, you. Uh. Mm, and I still am. <laughs> I'm proud of I you. I would like for it to be yeah. known. I'm still holding them in place. Yeah, almost an hour and 15 minutes later. So I'm proud of you. Good job. I'm a professional. <laughs> um, I don't know if you could tell from this recording, but <laughs> I'm a professional. <laughs> so um, we don't have any ideas. So if you have a topic idea that you want to hear us talk about, it can be ADHD related. It can be just life in general related. It can be mental health related. Whatever you are interested in, if you want to hear us talk about it, um, send us a DM on Instagram or send us an email. Um, our email is the bar is ankle high at gmail.com. There's also a form on our website you can fill out either way. It doesn't matter to us. I think it's also too like if even just like, oh, hey, I saw this tweet about ADHD because we can totally take the ball and run with it. Yes. Um, and we'll do that to each just... other sometimes. I should probably go back through our text to be like, here's an idea. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Okay, you just had one. There we go. Hey, you know what our topic is going to be? We have a podcast and we don't know what to talk about. So we're going to talk about how we find topics. <laughs> Yay. And maybe something will come to us. <laughs> um, but so if you have an idea that you want to um, mm -hmm. hear us talk about, let us know, please. Um, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at the bar is ankle high. We are also on TikTok at ankle high pod. We are on threads at the bar is ankle high. And um, our Patreon is patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high for five bucks a month. You get added to our close friends list on Instagram. You get ad free episodes, video episodes, bonus episodes, and extended cut audio only episodes all at the same time. Um, and it's really nice and it's a great way to support us. Um, another great way to support us is to leave us a five-star review anywhere you find us, especially on Apple Podcasts. If you write out a review, that's like super duper helpful. And also it makes us screech with joy every time somebody leaves us a review. Um, so anytime you can do that, uh, we're super happy about it. And please do it. Um, it's small business Saturday. <laughs> Go. You're not going to be hearing this on Saturday. Maybe you will be next Saturday. Support a small business. <laughs> Support a small business. Um, I'm sorry, I really need. I really need a nap. Is <laughs> it's, it's nap time. Yeah, me. it's small business Saturday on Thursday. There's a non-binary Satan alligator and um, named Satan, <laughs> and <laughs> that's swimming around in the water, waiting to box Jesus. Right, and we have merch For at bit.ly/slash/anklehighmerch. Um, and that's all I got. Am I forgetting anything? You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> um, in the meantime, um, I don't know. Enjoy your Theta waves and pack your bug out bag. Yeah. Because the bar is ankle high. I was going to say, like, yeah, step away from a building during an earthquake. No. Don't stare <laughs> underneath the building and watch it fall on Stay you. Stay in a doorway. <laughs> Why am I blurry again? Because you said the wrong thing. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I was like, I um. Know. Anyway, yeah. So stay in a doorway and pack your bug out bag because the bar is ankle high. And enjoy your theta waves because your bar. Th- <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my god! See you next week, guys. <laughs>